Good evening, friends. How is everyone doing tonight? It's uh, Wind Down Wednesday again. It's Wind Down Wednesday. Hi, everyone. It's kind of like our favorite day of the week, I think. It is. I look forward to this every week. I do, too. I do, too. Um, this was a very, very interesting night for us. I mean, we are doing a food pairing, and we... <laughs> We done got a little crazy tonight, so we got some cool stuff. Um, I hope there's some people out there that are uh, cooking up a feast like we do. I mean, we're going to show you this stuff as we go through these courses, but there is a lot of good stuff here. I mean, lamb chops and caprese apps and sockeye salmon and spicy shrimp dishes and cupcakes. I mean, they're real pretty. They are real pretty. They're very aesthetically pleasing. I'm just going to tell you guys, I already had one I cheated. I couldn't help it. I was a little stressed out today, so. Um, so today is all about food pairings and pairing your wine with food. It's uh, it's always fun to have people over your house, and um, when you do, it's it's good to be able to have the right pairings and, and know how to properly prepare food. And even with your you know some different other or friends or parents or kids or whatever, it's nice to be able to pair things because you know you go to Europe. I think here in America we just kind of eat and drink and whatever, but Europe is definitely more about wine with food. It yes. really is about the pairing aspect. So, so we want to do something really fun tonight. Um, we, we done dressed up a little bit, just a little bit. Because it's Fancy Pants food pairing, so I'm very excited. This was her call. I think she made a very smart decision. I that. did, and I kind of feel like we're um, at prom. A little bit. <laughs> we match. We match pretty well, actually. I think so. I'm impressed with our ability to match without ever seeing each other's color of yellow. Yeah, we just, just sort of made it happen, so. Yeah. Good job. Thanks. Good job to you, too. Oh, shucks. Thanks. Perfect. So, go ahead. Go All right, next. I was going to say, we have a special guest tonight, so we have to dive right in. Right, we are. So, we've got basically four courses we're going to cover, and whatever wine you guys have tonight, obviously, work. We put Riesling, we put Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and an Italian. Um, I think we've got some people that might have Chianti. Mm -hmm. I broke out a Nebbiolo, which is a baby Barolo. But with that fourth course, we're super excited. we got Chef Frank Akabuchi. He is the chef at Pranzo Bistro in downtown Willoughby, Ohio. Uh, very talented chef. Um, I've been able to do some work with him in the past. He's awesome. So he's got a really cool dish. We're going to bring him in for our fourth course. He's going to talk about the food he's doing, teach you a little bit about it. So it'll be fun to have that too. You learn how to make some really cool food too. Um, yes. Let's get started. Are you ready? Sure. What's our first course? Our first wine I'm going to go with because you need to finish your red. Adam is cheating whilst cooking. Um, that wine's good. So good. It's a Riesling. Thank you. I appreciate you. All right. I just killed it. I appreciate you. So tonight we have our M. Sellers Riesling fan favorite, right? Big fan favorite. Yes. Yeah. We love Matt. Um, so it's a local Ohio winery. It's fabulous. I'm going to finish mine. So the best thing about these Rieslings is that, mm -hmm. you know, I think Ohio, we, know, we like to always support local, right? I mean, it's always. It's super important. Especially, so, in, yeah, especially nowadays. Right. But Ohio really is really well known, just like the Finger Lakes, for making really good white wines mm -hmm. and hence Rieslings. Yeah. Now, there's also another area that I think is very well known for Rieslings. Um, and have you guys been to Germany? No. You know what? It's next. I'm going to go like next week, probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. She's headed out to Germany. Oh, man. I'm Do not going to Germany, but some of the most popular Rieslings come. Um, from is it the Moselle? Yeah. The Moselle region yeah. of Germany, correct? Which, as we were going through our thank you, our food pairings and what we wanted to discuss, the pictures of the grapes that grow along the hillsides are breathtaking. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's there. It, yeah, it's right along the river. They're up the hillsides. So everyone that's watching, please Google it. Um, the pictures are phenomenal. Yeah, if you want to know how to spell it, it's M O S E L. Just for those that want to know how to spell it. Um, but yeah, that, there's there's that region, and we also have there's right an area right along the Germany and France region called Alsace, another really really premier area for Riesling. Mm -hmm. And there's also like when people talk about Riesling, you're talking there's really like three parts. You have your sweets. You have your sweet, your semi sweet, and your dry. Correct. Which is fun for our food pairing tonight. So sweet. Pairs great with spicy dishes, and I love spice. My personality is spicy. I would definitely say she's spicy. And I love spicy food. So tonight we have Thai. Um, so we have a mix of chicken and shrimp, um, pampana, and it is phenomenal. You said I, that really good. I was worried about it because I was going to blow it if I'd say it. I actually Google pronunciated <laughs> it quite a few times. Um, and I've had this whilst cooking. You already tasted I, it? Oh, it's phenomenal. And it pairs nice with this particular Riesling because sweet goes with spicy, but semi-dry has such 
a wide, it's more versatile. So this is semi-sweet sweet. It's not overly sweet, but it's perfect with the Thai food. And I think since I already tried it, you should sip your wine and jump right in. I think I'm going to do that. I'm yeah. definitely going to give it a shot. It's delicious. So semi, yeah, semi-sweet reasoning. I mean, it's a great, great versatile wine. I mean, you still can pair it up with the spices, but you can still pair it up with some of your like mm-hmm. softer dishes. Like mm-hmm. if you had a dry Riesling, I mean, you would want to do like. Well, if you have a dry Riesling, um, we'll let you eat. And I'll, <laughs> I'll go ahead and talk while you eat. Um, if you have a dry Riesling, you're going to want to do light foods. So very, very simple fish. You're going to want to do vegetarian, lighter style sauces. Um, when you say sauces. <laughs> So you want to do lighter style sauces. You don't want to do anything big, so no big red sauces. You want to do like a halibut, a tilapia, definitely not spicy Thai food. Right. And you did not try a bite. I'm trying it. I get it. You, I'm, you I'm getting into it. You're slacking. I'm going to Use your fork right and get right in. So there's shrimp and chicken in here. There are. Is mm-hmm. this super spicy? Am I blowing my face off? Because I do like spicy. When I tasted it, it was not overly spicy. But they did really the good. Yes. Yeah, the chicken's phenomenal. I'm going in for a I saw. I saw you. Oh, you had mushrooms. <coughs> All right, it's really good. It is good. The key is really about those pairings. So, I probably would even like it to be spicier because I like it to like. I want to start sweating I, a little bit. I 100. percent Yeah, agree. And it, it's supposed to be spicy, but you don't want to overpower your wine. Then you might be able to taste all the flavors in your riesling. No, it actually, I think it pairs great. That just right. a little bit of sweetness. You know, it reminds me, like, I like margaritas sometimes. So I do a jalapeno mango margarita because you get a little hot and mm-hmm. a little spicy. There's some really good about hot and spicy together. So I am in a spicy margarita as you are aware. I like it. Yes. I like it. Well, that's a phenomenal pairing. So yeah. I think we did good on this one. All right. Round one. For anyone else, I'm going to pull up our chat room. That for those who are watching our show tonight, obviously, if you have questions along the way here, by all means, ask away in our chat room. Um, if you'd like to join the chat room, it is free to join. You can see the link for it is on our Facebook event page. There's also a link on winemaker, uh, winetastings.com. Just click live show on the top. There's a little button that says uh, live chat. So you can jump right in and be a part of our live chat as well. So we do have some things. She's saying hi. Hi. She's like, she likes Germany. So. Does she want to come with us? I'm sure we can invite more people now. The more the merrier. I, I agree. Your so, nose is snuffling. Is it a little spicy? Well, after it's a little, <laughs> a little kick after. It gets a little, gets you a little bit. It gets okay. a little bit. And like for me, I'm a, I like riesling, but I like the traditional dry rieslings. If you're looking for a producer that makes an awesome dry riesling, I'm just going to throw this out because it's one of my favorites. It's a true German from the Mosel region, von Schleinitz. You can find it a lot of places that do a dry riesling. It's like 15 bucks a bottle, so it's super affordable. But it is super dry, and you get a lot of that more like green fruit, a little apple pear to it. So it's it's phenomenal stuff. So if you want to try dry riesling, I think everyone's misconception is riesling's are all sweet, and they really are. It was aren't. my misconception at first, until yeah. I became more educated. That was exactly what I thought. Yeah, you go to Germany, the majority of the, mm-hmm. the rieslings there are going to be more dry than they're going to be sweet. So mm-hmm. good job, great Thank pairing. You. Uh, here I am. I'm here uh, for the next hour. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'll be around for a little bit. I am. Course number two. Uh, You tell me. All right. So we're going to get into our second course of the evening. Um, This one is the Chardonnay. Okay. We're going Chardonnay. We're going to stay with white. We're going with, yeah, we're sticking with white. Okay. And the Chardonnay, we decided to, we wanted to do um, a fish dish. So I kind of picked a wild sockeye salmon. I'm just going to move everything off my table. Go for it. It's a little cluttered. (laughs) So the wild sockeye salmon, great. You want those Chardonnays, you want a little bit more of those bigger style fishes, not like a white fish, so something that has a little bit more ump to it. It's very pretty. And we did a slight, a sage for blanc sauce on it, which is basically lemon, um, sage, a little bit of Chardonnay, and some butter. And it gives it a really, really, really good flavor. So we're going to get into this too, but do um, you want to tell people about our Chardonnay? we got a domain Eden. I'm going to, excuse me for standing up here real quick. I'm not going to take anybody okay. out. So domain Eden which we sampled this prior as well, and it's delicious, um, from the Santa Cruz Mountains. So taste-wise, surprised me. Um, I'm definitely not an oaky, buttery Chardonnay person, but I surprisingly enjoyed this. Um, you can definitely taste the creaminess um, right in your mouth. Like, it is forward. 
Um, and that comes from like the malactic fermentation, right? Malactic fermentation. It's a fun word to say. It is such a fun word. Um, so again, we paired it with the salmon with cherry wood chips. Did you tell everyone it was cooked and grilled with cherry wood chips? Yeah, you know, we're based in Cleveland and it's, it's kind of cold and crappy out, but we actually busted up the grill tonight. Um, so our lamb chops will be next and our, we put everything on the grill. So it's super, super good. And we're really excited about it. Now, when it comes to Chardonnay, you have a lot of different types. I mean, there's there's oak Chardonnay, which is a little bit more traditional for yes. California. You've got stainless steel that's... Well, right. For people much like myself right. that don't prefer a buttery Chardonnay. Um, and I was, I was like this until you, actually. You encouraged me not to shut down on Chardonnays, but to try um, stainless steel aged Chardonnays. So Oregon or ones from France known as White Burgundy. So if right. you taste and try those um completely different palette and they're not buttery they're not oaky and that's exactly what i was looking for in chardonnay and we had one actually two weeks ago that i it was, it really was my absolute favorite wine of the evening mm -hmm. and a quick shout out to some friend uh paige paladino you hate chardonnays i know you do but i'm going to find one that you like i promise i will she's an anti-chardonnay she's never been a big fan but you go to White Burgundy, Chablis. I mean, I think people think of Chablis. They think those uh, those gallon bottles you buy yes. at the grocery store. I'm like, you're supposed to only those cook with them. Those always crack me up. Yeah, right. But there are really great Chablis that are out there, and they're phenomenal wines. And the French style is just less oak. It's a, it allows the fruit to be a little bit more dominant than the oakiness and the toastiness. So Napa, California, a little bit more of that oakiness, toasty. And, sure. then, and then France, White Burgundy is going to be up to traditionally. A little bit more tuned down a little bit. So, what do you say if we bring some friends in? I hear there's a wine party happening. There is. I do believe there's a wine party happening. You think they have any questions? Do you think they're eating and drinking and having a good time? <laughs> should we should we rain on their parade? I mean, yeah. if you're watching, we're coming into you. We're coming into you. Oh, look at these folks. Oh, hey, hey. everybody. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> we caught you by surprise, didn't we? Sir, with the only arm, you can see your face. <laughs> They're all drinking. That's what we're excited about. Yeah. So, what do you guys like so far? The Chardonnay and the and the Riesling. Give us give us some input real quick. I'm still tapped into the Chianti here. I have I've been going with the uh, the lamb chops and the Chianti. Oh. So you're just jumping right into it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'm staying on screen to hide my uh, my Batman identity. <laughs> for, for any of you guys that uh, have been to our previous shows, um, Batman's always a part of our shows, and, and he, he he joined us on Wind Down Wednesday. So we do have to keep his identity hidden. I mean, he is a superhero, so it's important that no one sees his real identity. So you will only see arms and, well, God knows what else he might show, but no face. <laughs> so, Batman, I have to ask you, how are the lamb chops? Since he went ahead and on to course three before one and two, which... I might get back up and go into the kitchen and get some more, honestly. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Did you eat dessert before you started this wine tasting? I may or may not have dabbled in some dessert <laughs> for dinner. So you do everything backwards. Everything. Just that's all right. You know, as long as you're enjoying yourself, that's what wine and food is all about. Good times with friends and family and enjoying yourself. So. Hi, Devin. Sorry, Devin. She yeah. happens to be one of my closest friends, joined in and said, hi, guys. Thank you, uh, Washington, D.C. We moved, I moved her to Washington, D.C. She did. She came out for the tequila crawl in the hat. That's right. Hi, Devin. How are you? It's nice to see you. Hi, Devin. <laughs> All right. You're so we're going to come back to you guys. So you guys better to be prepared. We got some, we're going to, we're going to expect some good questions from you guys here shortly. Yeah. Like, do you guys know what it means? Like the fermentation process for Chardonnay? Yeah. Do you know what malactic fermentation means by chance? No, we, I know for fermentation is, but I don't know that specific process. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, it's just, in my opinion, it's a little gross. Um, I have a milk and butter thing, so for me, it's not my thing. Um, so it's the essentially the buttery taste in your wine. So it's a process where the tart malactic acid in the wine converts to like a softer, creamier malactic acid. Um, which happens to be the exact same acid found in milk, um, which is why you get that creaminess in your mouth and on your palate as you're drinking it. 
Um, and it also, the process reduces the acidity in the wine and releases carbon dioxide at the exact same time. So it's kind of a long, and it's much more detailed than that. That's a very simplified version. Um, but it's, it's a good starting point as to why Chardonnays have a creaminess to them. Winemaker Kristen, who would have known? I think we're going to call Belle tonight. Belle. Yeah. Uh -huh. We're going to call her Belle tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's the Beauty and the Beast dress. Oh, Central. absolutely. I, I'm a fan. Right. <laughs> oh, you have to try the salmon. We do. Ladies first. I tried the last one first. Let's, let's dig in. Okay. I'll even go at the same time. Go ahead. You All right. What do you think of? And go. I love salmon. I really think salmon and uh, shellfish, some of my favorite wines um, with Chardonnay. They really just go really well, especially if anything that you're going to do with a little bit of a butter sauce. All right, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to put the show on pause, <laughs> and we're going to crust some food, and we'll be back in five minutes. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this is really, really tasty. Mm -hmm. Man, two courses down, both of them are pretty solid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The presentation is quite lovely as well. It is. We made on presentation that is probably pleasing things. She did, she did good. She, she did good. Really good. Well, I'll, I'll give you most of the credit. Yeah. <laughs> that is good. So two courses down. We should palate cleanse. Shall we? Yeah. So we. this wasn't necessarily part of it, but... Kristen threw a little something special together. Well, I don't like a thanks. I like food, but we got a little mozzarella caprice going. So we're real excited about that. But actually, I am because I'm going to eat all this food as soon as we're done. <laughs> and I'm real excited because I've been saving my appetite for that. So. I saved mine as well. Do you know I had Italian sausage for breakfast? And that's it. All day. I waited all day in anticipation of this show. You had it better than me. I did cinnamon toast crunch. <laughs> I'm throwing it out there. Nothing to hide here. I have a thing for cinnamon toast crunch. What is it about cinnamon toast crunch? I don't know. It's just, I love cinnamon, and okay. it's a great way to start the day. And ever since I was a pretty young lad, I've always been in the cinnamon toast crunch. So don't judge me. I'm sorry. Golden grams are good too. Oh Lord. I'm letting it all out. These are really good, by the way. Thank you. Um, do the yellow ones have a different flavor than the red ones? They do. They're, yes, the tomato tastes completely different. Mm. The one I just had was phenomenal. Thank you. Very good. Yeah. All right, we've got two whites down. We're going to get into two reds. You didn't even taste your white. I did. Did you? I did. Well, how can we go to red? Your glass is half full here, sir. Mm, I'll slow it down. I'll be honest with you. When I had this, this blew me away because I thought, you know, Domain Eden is it's a traditional California Chardonnay. I thought it was going to be like this big, heavy, buttery, popcorn buttery type of thing, and it really wasn't it. The fruit showed, and I, I don't have every answer in the world when it comes to wine, just 99% of the answers. So this one got me a little bit, but it is a 2009. I've been saving it for a little while. and oh, a little while. Okay, so I've been I saving it. I was graduating it, high school in 2009. You don't say. No, I don't. <laughs> That's not true at all. <laughs> That's completely not true. <laughs> but it was, um, you know, 2009, I've been saving it. I know a lot of these, like, bigger, robust Chardonnays, they can age well. If Chardonnay is really, like, it's not red wine, but it does drink a little bit more like a red wine. I mean, it's um, it's one of the full bodied reds that, or excuse me, whites that you can drink. And you're not, yeah, you're not supposed to serve it cold. Did you know that? Like a typical white wine? I'm sure you did, because you know 99 <laughs> things. But in case you didn't, for those people who are watching who are not Adam, 60, right? Low 60s, you're supposed to serve the Chardonnay. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you basically treat it like a red wine. In a sense, absolutely. You know, you know, people ask that all the time about like temperature. What's your proper serving temperature? Mm -hmm. In general, a lot of your wines, like your Sauvignon Blancs, you can serve those cold, real crispy. You want those like cold and crispy. That's cool. One hundred percent. But when you get to like these Chardonnays, the colder the wine, the less aromatics you're going to get, and the less, uh, less of the, the flavor and the profile of the palate you're going to get too. Absolutely. So when you let that wine, you know, warm up just a little bit, you just get a lot more going on. And I don't know. I, for 2009, I thought this thing might have been dead. It could have been falling off its peak. We were like, worried for a minute. I was super worried. I'm like, <laughs> you know, I've been saving it. But I am, you know, I'm not a huge California shark guy, but this is really, really it's tasty. It's delicious. We have one. <laughs> we may. As much Chardonnay as you would like. No, I really, really do like it. 
which is why, because it's a little heavier, it pairs nicely with the lighter fish. It does. And, it's, and there is a little bit of that Chardonnay in the sauce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's all about weight, right? Are you supposed to balance the weight of a wine with the weight of a food? I would agree with that, yeah. Like, they don't want to, one doesn't want to take over the other. They want to complement one another. That's why you don't put a heavy sauce. Sauce. Right, with the dry <laughs> I agree. No, I absolutely agree. See? I'm, I'm excited. What's next? She likes this, and I didn't know if she was going to like it, but we did try it earlier. No. And I'm really, we're, we're trying it. Dan, if you happen to watch this, Dan's the, uh, the head over at Jack's in California. Uh, a great producer. Um, he makes a lot of really, really good wines. Um, and broke out his Y3 Pinot Noir today. It's from the Russian River Valley, and it is absolutely spectacular. I do believe uh, it may, I don't know if it's this vintage or the previous one, but it was a 94 pointer. Um, just, it's just, it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful wine. So, and if you don't know a lot about Russian River, California, you're going to get, um, oh, does she want one more? Yeah. I love it. Um, the cool thing about California at Russian River is Russian River is um, a little bit more traditional. And when I say that, you get a little bit more of that Burgundian kind of style to it. Um, the Pinot Noirs that come from like maybe Caneros and, and other regions are going to be more of that bigger, riper fruit. Um, Oregon's going to have more of that softer, red burgundy style like France does. But Russian River Valley, too, it's, it's, you get a little bit more of those earthier notes as well. So it's, it's a great balanced wine. It's phenomenal. I know we opened it earlier just to sample and taste to see what we were tasting and smelling. We had to put this bottle away. Yeah, we, we kind of had to hide it because we're like, this thing's not going to make it to the event. No. That's not a good thing. It, it's phenomenal. It really is good. So traditionally with Pinot Noir, great pairing foods are a lot of your white meats. And personally, my favorite, and I'm glad that you know we made this happen, was um, lamb is probably one of the all-time best things to pair with it. Having that little bit of the earthy tones of some of your Pinot Noir really match up to that slightly gaminess that you get, where it's not just chicken or turkey. Correct. It's just a little bit more of a flavorful. So I love lamb, and Kristen prepared some lamb chops for us this evening. Um, this mushroom risotto is going to pair perfectly with it. A bit of asparagus. Just take over the show for now. And That's fine. I mean, <laughs> you go ahead and eat. I can talk all night long. Um, but I do appreciate the colors on this plate. We all know I'm all about presentation. So I don't need it to taste wonderful personally. That's just who I am. But it looks phenomenal. Um, and Batman went into it first course. He was it's like, it's good. <laughs> what did you, um, how'd you season these lamb, lamb, these lamb lollipops? It's a family secret. Family secret. <laughs> um, I did rosemary, thyme, olive oil, salt, pepper, garlic, like fresh garlic, not what? minced garlic or anything of that nature, but absolute fresh garlic. Um, and let them sit for a couple of hours. It's a nice little marinade. Yeah. You bought the brakes on. That's okay. And the asparagus has garlic and olive oil and a little bit of butter, which I'm typically eating. <laughs> You're like, I don't need all that butter. And then mushroom risotto, because I know you like mushrooms. So that's what I'm talking about. It's that simple. Is it good? It's really, really good. Okay. I mean, the flavor is super balanced. And literally everything you should marinate this thing with oh. is perfect for like these... Um, I call them a little bit more earthier style Pinot Noirs. I mean, there's really two types in general. You get more of a fruit driven Pinot Noir and more of an earthy driven Pinot Noir. A lot of the stuff you see in um, Burgundy is a little bit more earthy. Oregon, it's tough. Part of the southern part of the Willamette Valley is a little bit more of the cow pastures. So you're going to get a little bit more of the earthy Pinots down there. You'll Amity, that area. If you get super north, Chehalem, Ribbon Ridge areas, um, they get a little bit more of that fruit forwards, that strawberry and Marion berry. So it depends. If you want to do something really cool, everyone talks about going to Napa and Sonoma all the time for a wine trip. We do. We have talked about this. That's probably <laughs> going to happen. That's so. us. We're <laughs> everyone. But uh, Willamette Valley, Pinot Noirs, I know you think, oh, we're just going to drink Pinot, Pinot, Pinot. They really are all different. Like, you can go to 10 different wineries and try different Pinots and be like, wow, it almost tastes like different wine. 
it's it's totally worth going there. Um, there's a winery per se in Dundee Hills. It's a friend of mine. Um, I grew up with him. He's he's a great guy. He's a winemaker at Tory Moore. And if anyone is watching our show right now that wants to go to Oregon, all you have to do is reach out to us and say, "We're going to Oregon. We help us out." And I will set you up with Mr. John Tomaselli, and he will take very, very good care of you, and you will absolutely adore his wines. He does Chardonnay, stainless steel, like we were talking earlier. Mm -hmm. So very fruit driven. I'm going to Oregon. <laughs> That's what I heard. I guess I'm not invited. Road trip. <laughs> so definitely a cool place to visit. Instead of just doing the traditional nap, if you want to do something fun, do an Oregon, and you can even cross over to the state of Washington. It has some big, big, juicy reds, cabs, cab francs, Bordeaux style reds, right there on the wet uh, off. Do you love a good Bordeaux? They're really, really good. Walla Walla, Red Mountains, great, great stuff. So, do you think we should check in on our humans? Should we see how they're doing in there? I think so. I wonder how much food they're eating. That, they're, Batman, if you can hear us, please hide your identity. We're coming in hot. <laughs> coming in hot. And it's done just like that. <laughs> I, I feel like Batman's just eating lamb, lamb, lamb lollipops and skipping the rest. Accurate. <laughs> well said, well said. So do you guys have questions at all about some of the uh, some of the stuff that we're getting into? Like curious about some of these wines, why they may be paired with certain foods and so forth? I'm more curious about what pairs well with the dessert because it's staring me right in the face right now. <laughs> touche, touche. I feel like at this point, anything pairs well with the dessert, right? If they're, okay, so the, uh, they're Blackberry 11, obviously cupcakes. Not sure I have them too. I'm pretty. Either I drank too much as I was cooking or they're cooking. Apparently the phone drank too much. <laughs> um oh, yeah. Should we come back to that? Yeah. I hope you're okay, guys. They they could be having an earthquake. Who knows? Or a lollipop and chop overload. That's possible. Oh, they too. didn't have lollipops. They had shanks, didn't they? Um anyway. I'm not sure. I'm not sure you might have had shanks. The smokiness on this lamb chop is really good. Yeah, and I gotta be honest with you, this risotto is outstanding. And I'm going to go ahead and let everybody know what happened when I said I was making risotto. Do you remember what you said to me? By all means, sure. Uh, I do believe it went something like, ooh, risotto is really hard to cook. Do you know what you're doing? It is, and I admit I did say that. <laughs> and it's... I said, get out of my kitchen. I have this. <laughs> she said that too. And it's true. I mean, risotto is not the easiest thing to put together to get the consistency so that it's not like hard or soft or too mushy or, I mean. You didn't even have the asparagus. Okay. I don't want Hit anything me. but risotto. Okay. So I'll take the asparagus. <laughs> you stick with your risotto and lamb chops. And I'm not going to lie, they, they taste good as well. So, risotto is phenomenal. And lamb's kind of hard as well to try and like get perfectly cooked. Marion. This is true. All of it. Mm. And the smokiness is phenomenal. It did come out really, really good. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. If I could do a meal, like a special meal any night, it would be Pinot Noir and lamb all day, every day. Mm. It's such a good combination. It's like the soul food, and I don't know. I think it's phenomenal. I love the I'm more of an earthy guy to begin with, so mm -hmm. I like those earthy driven wines. It's a big. Fruit bombs, it's not necessarily my, they're great. I've had some phenomenal lines like that, but I definitely want a little bit more of an earthy style line. So. What do you think the beast would like from being the beast? And lollipops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no question about not it. Not to say anything. Right. <laughs> Bella is like my dream character. This is where the yellow dress inspiration came from. I think you should consider trying out for the Beauty and the Beast part too. Probably going to be a no. <laughs> a hard no? <laughs> I mean, a soft no. But I text you very excited once I found the yellow dress because when we came up with the idea to do fancy pants, food pairings, that way we get dressed up and it doesn't matter if we're out. It's, it's a pandemic. So we're here, we're dressed up, we're having a good time. We're hoping, and we do hope everyone else has a good time, whether you dress up or you're in your yoga pants, which I typically am 97% of the time. Um, I was excited. The yellow dress was a thing for me. And when I found it, how excited was I? Um, she walked in with her dress just glowing. <laughs> <laughs> and I texted you in all caps and exclamation marks. It did. It was, I mean, truthfully, it was kind of like, it was like a senior in high school finding the best prom dress you could ever find in your life. So 
I and it, it looks gorgeous. I mean, she, looks, she looks great tonight. So I got really lucky that when I decided to pick the side of where it just happened to be the same yellow. So it worked yeah. out great. Really and great. we took some really basic prom pictures yeah. before this, too. Yeah, we're going to post them so that won't laugh too much. Or laugh. Or laugh. <laughs> we can laugh at There's each a other. Good ones. What's Joseph say? Have you tried some of the Pinots coming out of Ohio Grand River Valley? Yes. Both of us. Um, personally, I've had some, um, obviously, and sellers, and I hate to keep bringing it up because I love Matt, Matt and Tara. They, they make just really good wine. I mean, not just Ohio good wine, but in general, really, really good wine. It, they just show the characteristic yeah. of the fruit really good. But St. Joseph is another one. I don't know if you've been to St. Joseph. They've um, they've got some phenomenal no, Pinot Noirs, too. And Pinot Noir is really good, too. If you think about weather patterns and, like, longitude, mm -hmm. all that good stuff, um, Ohio really is similar to that of parts of Europe for like those pinots and those white grapes and, and so forth. So Ohio does a great job in general with white wines yes. and those softer, more feminine, elegant style reds. You'll feel no argument here. Should we do a, maybe we should do a pinot tour of Grand River. And we can document do it or we could like not even live stream it because that's Probably a bad but we could idea. videotape each but spot. We could definitely a, videotape each spot and create a little segment and go through what we found, what we liked, taste, smells, atmosphere. I think atmosphere is also huge when you're doing the wine tour. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. And that's a great idea. When, when are we going? Uh, when are we going? I don't do cold coffee. It's not a total trip. No, it's not. But I don't do cold weather when it's snowing out. We'll see if we can change that. I have a feeling if we put enough bubbles and bubbles, and things change. But we will put that together because I think it's a really good idea. And it would be really fun to like do a video that's showcasing like Ohio wine country. I mean, a lot of our followers are based in the Cleveland, Ohio area. We've got people in Phoenix as well because we do a lot of work out there. Um, our last week's show that we did with Hunter, we had we had people from I think ten, nine or ten different nine states. Nine or ten different states, yeah. So we had people from all over the country tuning in. So. It's super cool. And if, you, if you're outside of the Cleveland area or, or the Phoenix area and you've got some wineries out there, by all means, let us know. I mean, it would be fun to do like more of like a, like a local winery kind of tasting. And we'll have those wineries, a small, like the mom and pop local. Absolutely. Ones. It'd be fun to like, to like promote some of the local people too. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would have that thing. We should just travel around. I like I it. feel like that's ideal, right? We can get out of the snow. You know, we're supposed to get into snow now. No. And yeah, that. between tonight and tomorrow, we're supposed to get into snow, and it was 40 something degrees today. We're open for the trees. I'm not really into the snow anymore, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Um, there's, a, there's a guy I see. Do you see him? I see him, and he's, he, he's, he looks like he's cooking up a storm over there. So, we're very privileged this evening to um, bring in a special guest. Um, we didn't want to do all four courses ourselves, although Chris was pretty awesome at it. But we thought it'd be really cool to bring in um, a quote unquote celebrity chef, which he definitely is. I've known him for years. He literally makes nothing but badass, awesome food. Agreed. So, our last course that we're doing this evening is gonna have an Italian influence to it. Uh, the dish he has, great with like a Chianti Classico. I actually pulled out a Nebbiolo to this because I just wanted to see how it would do. Um, but we're gonna bring in our celebrity chef. If you've never been to downtown Willoughby, you should go. There's tons of great restaurants down there, but very specifically, one of our favorite restaurants in downtown Willoughby is Pranzo Bistro. Uh, Alfio, he's done an amazing, amazing job. His wife, Tony, they're, they're just great people. They have a beautiful place, a little patio outside. It's covered with vineyards or, 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 or vines and so forth. It's just a really cool place out there. So we're gonna see if Chef is ready for us. And I know he's prepping some of his pasta and he's going to show us a little bit about the dish he's going to make and his ingredients and all that good stuff. So let me see if I can track this young gentleman wait, in. Wait, wait, wait. Before you track him in, you only said his first name. Like, hit us with his full last name. It's a Chef Frank Acabucci. Is that good? It's my favorite part, yeah. He does have a pretty awesome last he name. He has a great and fantastic Italian last name. I would agree with that. Yeah. I would agree with that. You think he's ready? Um, can we just creep on his kitchen? Let's, or? let's do it. Let's, let's creep on his kitchen. Um, that is the kitchen right there of Chef Frank Ikebuchi. Do you think he can hear? No, if I know if I know the chef well, there's a good chance he's off camera right now sipping some wine. So Hi, there he is. 
How are you this evening, Chef? I need my volume. Hang on a second. <laughs> I think he just put us on hold. He said, like, y'all got to hold. Okay. Okay. Oh, there's his mic. Hi, guys. We appreciate you. Can you guys hear me? Yes. We can. And the fact that you now the glass is wine in your hand makes everything better. And I'm sure this is for Brandon. So. Hey, hey. <laughs> there we go. Frank, the show is all yours. Let me, let me turn my other volume because I'm ringing in here. Give me, give me one second. Yeah, I think he's actually. I think he's right. I didn't want any back feed on that. You guys that can hear good. me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're good. Um, so, Scott, you guys look awesome, by the way. First of all. Well, thank you. Yeah. We appreciate it. Listen, it was the food. Well, I cannot hear you guys. guys. Hold on a second. I cannot hear you guys. Hang on. I'm having testicle difficulties. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't think that was appropriate. Do you know something? Like all right, there we go. Is that better? I mean, we still can hear you. Can you hear, you can hear me? Okay, cool. Yep. Yep. All right. So, first of all, right? So, here's the thing you guys look awesome, Kristen and Adam. Here's the problem with you, Adam. I love the, I love the yellow, okay, but the black and yellow. Pittsburgh, come on, go Browns, right? Yeah. All right, there you go. So I'm just going to start it off like that. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. All right. Fair enough. Well said, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, we're going to turn this whole thing over All to right, you. So so I've already decanted food the Chianti. So. Right. All right. Are you guys getting feedback from me in the, in the background? Are you really? Why can I not hear you guys on this? Yeah, I Hang on. Uh, you guys, me and my testicle difficulties here. <laughs> Maybe your volume's turned off on your phone. All right, turn it over to me, and then I'm going to turn this off in the background. I'm going to do my thing, and we're going to get to work, okay? All right. <laughs> All right, so. I'm back. I apologize for all this. You're Thanks good. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. I really do. Again, salut chin chin. So what I have done, what I've prepared for you guys, we're going to do a traditional Roman pasta dish. Um, Bucatini uh, carbonara. Okay. Famous Roman dish. Um, very, very, very simple ingredients. Um, I think everybody at home usually should have this stuff in your pantry and you can make this, you can whip this up anytime. So what we're using is a, is a bucatini pasta. It's, and it's got the little hole in there. If you can see that. Okay. It's a thick, thick, thick spaghetti. Okay. You start with the spaghetti. We're going to use, um, you can use guanciale, uh, which is the, uh, smoked pork jowls, but here I'm going to use pancetta. You can use bacon. Um, if you don't have that, um, we're going to use grated Pecorino Romano and we're going to use egg yolks. Okay. So what I've already done, I've already had, I have the, uh, the pancetta already simmering on the stove here. Okay. You want to render that down. You can leave that nice fat in there. Um, it's delicious. Trust me. Um, pasta is is cook it in here basically. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take. But this this is um, this is two egg yolks to one whole egg. Okay. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna combine that with the picorino. And also, it has to have fresh cracked pepper. So. Um, Carbonara, what it does mean, um, it's coal, uh, 
coal miners pasta. Um, the story went that the the coal miners in Italy, um, this is this is a dish that they had readily available, so they would always make this dish. So um, it means charcoal, carbon, uh, charcoal burner is another. There's different different theories on what it means, but carbon is another one. Carbonara, carbon black. So put a nice couple of twists of pepper in here. And what you're going to do, you're just you're basically just going to whip this up and make a paste. And I apologize, I cannot hear Adam or Kristen. I'm sorry, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna whip this up and I'll turn my I'll turn my volume up in the background again here. So you whip this up into a paste like such, okay? And then again, here's the pancetta already rendered down. You can see that in there, okay? Get it nice and crispy. And again, you do this, this is all done off the heat after this. So what, what, what's gonna happen is the pasta is gonna cook the eggs. The pancetta's already cooked. You got that nice olive oil in there. You're just gonna combine it. I'm gonna take it right from the, right from the pot into the pan. We're gonna whip this egg right inside here. The egg and the cheese mixture. I know the chef can't hear us right now. But and we're gonna to toss it. It looks really, really good so far. Just it and it should all come together for you. See this while I'm doing this. You're just going to keep stirring it. It's getting nice and creamy in there, and that's cooking your egg yolks and that cheese. It's a nice saucy consistency. Bacon and egg pasta. I mean, it's very very simple. It's coming together nice. And if your dish happens to, if it tightens up on you, I'm happy with this consistency. I like it a lot. It's, it looks really good. Get yourself a ladle. Pasta water is your friend. If it tightens up on you, throw a little pasta water in there. That's all you got to do. And it'll come back together. Make it just keep turning it, keep turning it, keep turning it. Okay. So we're going to get a plate. And again, here's a here's another little trick for you guys at home. Again, chef secrets here. This is top secret, so don't tell anybody. What you do, get your ladle, you get your tongs, you get yourself a portion here. What you do is use your ladle and you twist. And you twist and you twist and you twist. Get a nice little tight little ball. You bring it to your plate. Just keep twisting. Get your nice little portion going on there. And again, we're going to want a little bit more pancetta on the top. Get your microplane. Again, Picorino Romano is the key. Picorino. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> We're trying here. Picorino Romano is the key to this. It's, it's a great cheese that pairs very, very well with this. Okay? And let it rain. Let it rain. <laughs> oh, yeah. I do love cheese. I mean, Picorino Romano goes awesome with everything. I can't have too much cheese. You said it. And then more fresh pepper. 
Look at the beauty. Can you guys see that? It looks good. I'm going to turn my volume up here. So I, I'm going to try to catch up with you guys here. All good. I'm really so you're going to ask questions now because by the time we get to like 40 seconds. So you are going to ask me questions? Ask questions now. Okay. Yeah. I feel like Steph Frank is so brilliant, right? Right. He's got all kinds of like pepperoni shirts for bologna. He's got a first bologna. We got a Chianti. We got all other kinds of brands. Where is your map team? That is a good question. And it's probably going to take about 30 seconds for to get this. Today, but that's a good question. I it's a, it's definitely an, a, an, a, it's an Italian thing. And I, I apologize that next time you guys are going to make lamb chops, and then I'll make this for you guys. Make sure we'll we'll do a little mano y mano. Is it? Maybe what we need to do I is do a You want me to try this, don't you? Kitchen. <laughs> yeah, like let's do a show on a bronzo and do like an Italian like wine and food pairing. <laughs> That's a happy chef right there. I think it's coming. Hey, Chef Frank. It's gonna take a second to hear this, but we don't know where your mop team is. Where is the mop team? I wish I could hear you guys. I'm so yeah. sorry. I'm good at sign language. Are you? No, but I can write it. I have enough time. I don't even know how you spell that. I got it. Listen, it's very important to me that I know this because I feel like. My <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right here. It's just it's always. Always as a mopping. <laughs> Here, wait. It's official. Always. <laughs> Always. And Frank, you're going to Chianti Classico this evening, I believe, right? I know, again, we're going to have a little delay, but I don't have a Chianti Classico this <laughs> So how how did you guys how did you like the vino? This is what we did tonight. Oh, I like that one, the Franco Sarah. Oh yeah, I know that one. Yeah, really good, baby. Yes, yeah, always. very good. So, so you guys, I probably could talk about the Nebbiolo tonight. He did. He saluted with his nappy. Chin chin, salute you guys. Thank you, Chef. We appreciate you and sharing your uh, amazing knowledge of food with everybody. And now we're catching up again. On the same audio level so that we can actually talk back and forth about a 30 second delay. Oh, technology is technology. It is. We can only do our best. Right. Things happen sometimes. Yeah. You do what you got to do. 100%. So what I'm going to do, though, is I want to talk about Italian wine before we finish this thing off. Because I also want to talk to people about some really good tastes. <laughs> and we're going to finish with that for sure. Thanks for having me. Thanks, buddy. We appreciate you. Thank you. Salute. Good old-fashioned chef Frank. And is, uh, what do you call it? Not technical, but just te te he said an naughty word. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. But so the wines that we did, Italian wines, phenomenal wines. Um, what we did tonight, he did a Chianti Classico, which is a region on the west coast of Italy, kind of like middle if you're looking from top to bottom. And then what we, do, we did tonight was a Nebbiolo. And a Nebbiolo is basically a baby Barolo. So it's a younger style Barolo. It's not aged as long. It's just it's just a baby version of it. And they're traditionally from the Piedmont region of Italy. And if you're not geographically dialed in with Italy, Piedmont is in the northwest corner, just south of the Alps. I'm not geographically dialed in ever. <laughs> well, now you are. There's a Diasti and a Dialba up in Piedmont as well. You like Moscato? No. There's a there's a girl. Should we show a girl here? <laughs> Should we throw her in here? Nick, you want to come and say hi to us? Come on. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Oh, 
can't get my dress. Off. Nikki's really pretty tonight too. Say this hi, everybody. TK, everyone. Hi, everybody. So, I am the Moscato lover of the group. She does. She does have a tendency to like a little bit more of those sweet style wines, and that's great. Are. So I, I think you guys should do an ice wine. All about ice wines. Yeah. It's not a bad idea. It's I mean, aggressive. we're in a specific location, Ohio, ice wines. Nikki's going to host the show for you that evening. Am I? So Nikki can absolutely sub out for Kristen that night. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think that would be a great idea? We can have a celebrity Kristen. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Well, you're in. I'd be in on You're in and I'm out. Got to have those things once in a while. It's good to mix it up a little bit. I'll do it. So. Cheers. Cheers. Chin chin. Chin chin. Cheers. If you're doing Italian dishes, it's, it's kind of hard to screw up pairings in Italy. Um, Chianti Chianti Classicos are made with 100%, almost 100% Sangiovese grape. So these are really good for pizzas. It's a, I call it pizza pasta wine. Um, your Barolos, your Brunellos, your Barbarescos are going to be a little bit bigger and more robust. Uh, Barbaresco is another great pizza wine. It's got a ton of tannins in it. And I think that's the one thing with Italian wines that a lot of people actually really get into. It's like, it is, there, there's a lot of tannins. You get a lot of that rose petal, a lot of sandalwood in there as well. Um, but uh, the Chianti Classicos will pair really, really well with the pasta dish heated night. I would probably say, because it's a little bit of a lighter sauce that heated this evening, that the Chianti Classico or Chianti might do a little bit better. Uh, the Nebbiolos are gonna, might have a little bit more of a bigger tannin structure to it. So okay. when we say tannin, I'm going to talk about some previous shows, you get a little bit more of that chalkiness in the mouth mm -hmm. and so forth. So some of those uh, those lighter style, a little bit easier drinking Italian wines are going to probably fit just a wee bit better. Did you try the Chianti? Or the Nebbiolo, excuse me? Um, oh, please. Let me get change that for you. Bye, 2K. 2K is leaving us. You can come in on the ice wine. Okay. Ice wine challenge. We should probably make it. Wait a minute. And I just hit you whilst you were doing that. But we should do an ice wine Olympic event. Are we going to be doing downhill skiing? No. I mean, it's like wine Olympics, beer Olympics, ice wine. You and I can be the commentators. I'm not. Thinking like ice wine is up my alley. It's a little too sweet for me. Um, but I think that 2K would 100% lead a team on an iced wine crawl with challenges we set forth. And by challenges, I don't mean Olympic events or collegiate events like beer pong. A more I scavenger hunt -ish. Scavenger hunt and a little bit of what's on your palate. What are you tasting? Where did it come from? That way they have the knowledge to back their ice wine. I think that's a good idea. And okay. we I mean we have a region here in Ohio that a lot of these wineries in the Geneva Madison area do yes. that. So we could pull that off for sure. Okay. And there's probably some even yeah. down in like the Akron area. There's wineries down south. Mm -hmm. We don't talk a yeah. ton about that Canton Akron area. There's some great vineyards down there and, and wineries as well. So maybe that's I mean that's a future show we're doing. So ice ice baby it is. And so we have to do it before, obviously. And we have to do it before the snow goes away because we're tied on time because we've got we got and some shows. We have shows and we have good outfits for SS baby. <laughs> That's true. I'm gonna wear a fur coat. Yeah, me too. <laughs> we want to tell anyone about our upcoming shows. We got some cool stuff coming. Oh man. I mean What's next week? Next week is the cab, no? The cab saw one 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 oh one. Let's that's us. That's us. That's aggressive. That's yeah. us. You're gonna have to see us two weeks in a row. St. Patrick's Day we took off. That's because we'll be drinking Irish beer in Jameson. And we will be cheersing to 2K's birthday. Oh, that's right. 2K's birthday is on it the is. 17th. Yes. So. so we did take that week off. But then the following week. The following week's a big week for us. It's a, it's a, it, it's definitely a pretty solid show. I mean, uh, Buena Vista is one of the oldest wineries out of the California area. Yeah. And the wines we're showcasing, we figured if we're going to do like a really, really high-end winery, we want to do their higher-end wines. It's easy for you to go to the store and try their what we call their North Coast series, which they have the Chardonnay, Pinot, Red Blend, Cabernet. But we actually decided we're going to bring on their Chateau series, and we also have a Champagne as well. And it's important to do this because we have two really cool guests that are going to be part of this. We have the Count of uh, Buena Vista that's going to be here. Favorite, one of my favorite humans. And then we have winemaker Brian that's going to be walking you through the whole thing. So it's a super awesome experience. You're going to have to truly meet a winemaker from Napa, California, from one of the most amazing yeah wineries out there it's going to teach you everything about their winery the history of napa 
uh, the wines that we're showcasing. So it's it's going to be a it's going to be a great event. That's March twenty fourth, eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And what do you think we should wear? You know, that's what I feel like now at this point. We found we found rogue. I think we should kind of go old school. Maybe do a little bit of a traditional kind of look, kind of matching like maybe the cow, like a fifties. Okay. I like it. Okay. Can you well, handle it? Can I handle She's it? Got it. <laughs> no question. If there is one thing <laughs> I can handle, it's fashion. That's true. I'm in. That's true. So please, by all means, tune in. And we just you know the the, the, the group that that the Jean Charles Bosset collection, which is part of the Buena Vista. They have about 20 different wineries or so. Mm -hmm. um, we will be announcing the dates. We have two more events with them with a couple of different wineries with Raymond. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna be doing, um, it looks like we'll be doing a very special French on Bastille Day, which is July 14th. It's also a Wednesday, which worked out great because we are lined out Wednesday. So gotta have it on a Wednesday. Obviously. So we got some really cool stuff up and coming. Please tune in. If you wanna see our upcoming shows, you can either go to winemakerwinetastings.com or if you are a social media hound, you can go to Winemaker Wine Tastings on Facebook. The old FB. I appreciate Facebook. That's good. It's a great, great way to get information out to the world. I agree. And if they have ideas, right? If any of our viewers have ideas on what you want to see, what you want to learn, a vineyard, let us know. We'll go. And by we, I mean, we'll go, right? <laughs> You'll go. I'm in my men. We'll both go. And we'll have a good time and we'll learn and we'll teach. And I think there's nothing more that we want than to engage our viewers and, and really give you what you want as an experience. I agree. Right? The idea of introducing them new wineries and new right. winemakers. I mean, our niche is definitely about the whole winemaker aspect. So we like to throw ourselves in the mix once in a while too. But. That's why we squeezed in these outfits tonight. And we're going to squeeze out of them so I can eat more food. So I'm real excited about that. So tune in next time. Uh, next week, like we said, we've got styles of Cabernet. So you got Cabernet Sauvignon from four different countries. You learn the difference between cabs, why California tastes the way it does compared to maybe Argentina or Australia or France, because they definitely have a difference between all four. So that'll be next week at 8 p.m., then a week off, and then um, we will see you on the 24th with some amazing people from Buena Vista. Good? Sounds good. You ready to finish your dinner? Um, no. We have unfinished business on this table. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna skip the dinner and go right to dessert. Aren't we? we have to try it. No, it's really good. So, what is this? Tell, tell everyone. So, that. this is a lemon poppy seed cupcake, if you will, with a blackberry frosting. I'm separating the two so I can kind of bite them in tandem. Pairs nicely with everything. Well, that's pretty darn cute and good. I mean, who needs, good. who needs a meal when you can just go right to dessert? Now I know why Batman was going lollipop cupcake, lollipop cupcake. Makes perfect sense to me. Because it's light. So it's much like a wine pairing. So the cupcake is really light, in my opinion, the flavor. And then you have a great blackberry frosting. No, I agree. It's not like tons of chocolate where it's overbearing. Okay. It's, it's really good. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, you're I'm a happy camper. Finish my raspberry now. We're gonna finish our wine. We're gonna finish our food. Enjoy the rest of our Wednesday. Happy wine down Wednesday to everybody out there in wine world. We appreciate you joining us this evening. We appreciate our friends that tuned in and the people that joined us tonight and that drank wine and ate good food. And cheers. Cheers. Come in. We'll see everybody next time. Reach out to us if you have suggestions. We want to hear from you. Take care.